What up, Misfits? Today we are tackling the interval piece from day five, week two, which is a nasty little couplet of heavy wall balls and C2 bike. So the workout goes as such, AMRAP three minutes, rest three minutes, AMRAP three minutes. The first three minute window is 30 wall balls with a 30 or 20 pound ball to the 10 or nine foot target, followed by max calories on the C2 bike at a six slash five plus damper. So you can go higher than that, but you can't go below. Rest three minutes, and then you'll do the opposite. You will start with a 30 slash 24 calorie C2 bike, same damper settings, followed by max wall balls. Round number one, I love wall balls. To me, that's somewhat of a free set. Being able to do 30 heavy ones is kind of a nice gimme as opposed to doing it in the second movement. So first thing I'm thinking about there is making sure my hips are loose, I'm hitting that target, and then I'm really breathing as I'm working through those heavy wall balls. I don't wanna get to the bike having held my breath for 30 straight reps. That's about a minute of wall balls, which would make for a very excruciating, terrible C2 bike. Now the pace is not send, so when you get on that bike, hopefully you're not much past a minute 15 into that first working window, giving yourself somewhere on that minute 45 time domain to get as many calories as possible. Now for those of you that really know your split, you're thinking you're going a little north of a thousand meters on the C2 bike. So for me, what I was gonna do is look at my pace and try to say, all right, whatever I get in like the first minute, because I had about two minutes on the bike, I'm gonna try to duplicate and get in the second minute as well. So start a little hot, probably in the high 16s, low 17s, and kind of settle to that like mid 15 range, which was a really uncomfortable pace. But one of the things that happens in a workout like this is that you'll have those moments of weakness where you're like, oh fuck, I really can't keep doing this. The trick here is staying mentally tough and picking some sort of metric that's gonna keep you accountable. Whether that's RPMs or your cals per hour, but find something to latch onto and don't be afraid to experiment with standing and being uh, sitting with your pedaling, as well as maybe even going north of six. I didn't change my damper, but for some of you who might be more power based, you might like to do stand and sprint for like 30 seconds, then kind of settle on the bike, sit for 30 seconds, kind of go back and forth that way. So don't be afraid to experiment and then you'll get into your three minute rest. You're gonna be uncomfortable. You just rode the bike for about two minutes. The number one objective there is get the poison out of your legs and get your heart rate back down. So the best way to do that, crank the damper down to one or two and just sit and spin. So, so one, after one minute, I got 25. And I said, all right, I'm gonna try to get 25 more calories. Minute two, which I did. So I'm not as concerned about that round. I'm concerned about this round. <laughs> this next one, to be smart, I can't send the 30 calories because then I'm not gonna do all balls. So I'm gonna try to hold a similar output which is not a sand, but a reach pace. And then I'm gonna do my damnness not to put the ball down for the, hopefully the minute 45 or so I have left, which is gonna be like 50 wall balls. So it's a pretty tall task, but whole point of training is overreaching. So I'm gonna see what I have. And I got 90 seconds, so I'm trying to flush my legs out right now. So my clock is to six. I'm ready to do round two. Don't just lay in a pile, move. Now, unlike the first round, not as happy about it. I'm already tired. My legs are already kind of filling up with poison and I gotta get through 30 calories. So my thought there is, if I'm fresh, I could probably do 30 calories in just under a minute if I were to send it. Again, I'm not sending it, I'm reaching. So I was shooting to be done somewhere around like the 110, 115 mark. Again, thinking I'm gonna have about a minute 45 for wall balls and having done enough workouts, I was planning on 50. So got through my bike, it's a little bit faster on average probably than the first round, because obviously the first movement gets the wall ball. And I said, I'm gonna try to hold on for the entire uh, entire minute 45. I did not do that. Yeah, not. No, I got to uh, 30 reps and I started to fail. I kept throwing the ball and throwing air balls or just not hitting the target. And one thing you wanna do in training is hold yourself accountable. You know, you wanna keep high level of output and intensity, but not if it means poor movement. So at 30 wall balls, I tried to give myself a short rest. And in my mind, it was like a two second rest. But if the tape reflects, it's probably not two seconds, probably more like 10 or 15. But the big thing there is, as soon as the ball hits the ground, that timer in your head starts. Five, four, three, two, one, pick the ball up and go. And I think I got another 29 reps in the second go, but I had two no reps there, so I called it 47. So overall, the score was 98 reps, the 51 calories on my C2 bike, followed by the 47 reps on the uh, the wall ball. And again, a big part of this workout is making sure you have the right stimulus. If you grab the 30 pound ball or the 20 pound ball, ladies, and you're thinking like, I better break this up into two or three sets in the first 30, you have the wrong ball. Go a little bit lighter and push for bigger unbroken sets. And that specifically matters when you get to that second interval. Because again, if you get off that bike, you're feeling like a champ. You're like, oh, you know what? I just crushed those 30, 24 calories in like a little over a minute. And you're taking a break every 10 wall balls. You're just leaving so much intensity on the table. So you'd be better off with a lighter ball and trying to hang on for that full window. A couple of things to think about moving into it. Make sure you warm up, spike your heart rate. You know, the stimulus is muscular overload. It felt a bit gassy for me. I love wall balls and C2 bikes. So, you know, my muscles weren't really what's failing me. It was my breathing. So make sure you spike your heart rate so you don't get shocked after you do your first 30 wall balls and you get on the bike, you're like, 
all right, I'm gonna hold 1,100 cows an hour as opposed to the 15 or 1,600. Second, make sure your hips are nice and loose. Don't leave your wall ball depth to question. Make it obvious, get nice and loose. And then when you're in your workout, the hard part here will be telling yourself you can keep going. A really big challenge for you out there is to remind yourself that your brain is wanting to want to quit before your muscles will. So if you can convince your brain to shut up for a couple of seconds, you should usually get past that little you know moment of uncertainty where you're not sure if you're gonna keep going. And then you'll be found yourself on the other side and being like, wow, I just pushed for a bigger set of wall balls or a faster split than I ever thought I was possible. And then last but not least, make sure you do some sort of flush in between your rounds. If you just lay there in a pile, the round two is not gonna be nice to you. So again, hit that with intensity, make sure you get a you know, good group to train with. And again, if you like these videos, be sure to follow phase four and we'll see you guys in the next one.